less agreed. The role of the multinational corporations has evolved. From being a profit-driven institution, it became an institution sensitive to the human rights compliance. And for a side affirmative to achieve this, they would rather have the MNC withdraw rather than helping the people on the ground. More often than not, countries with poor human rights conditions are countries with poor economic performance and lack of infrastructure. There are three fatal flow here as flow coming from government side. Number one, there is a lack of analysis on what will happen to the people on the ground if multinational corporations are going to withdraw their investment or their businesses from their own. It means that people on the ground will entirely suffer. There will be a lack of job opportunities. Economic opportunities will not be present and even the, the, the poverty elevation is not going to happen under their model. Secondly, there is also a lack of analysis on how will government respond to that given that the government itself is repressive and has been resistant to change. We would rather coming from side negative, cooperate with the government and maybe instill organic change. It might take time, but we're not willing to abandon the people there. Thirdly, there's a very uh, mis uh, there's a characterization that they need to reconcile. Because in the first time they tried to say that multinational corporations are vanguard of human rights. But on the latter half, they're also saying that the multinational corporate uh, multinational corporations rather are exploitative by nature. So which is which? But on the worst case scenario coming from our model, we can be able to guard doing the adverse effects of these multinational cor corporations investing on those developing countries. Number one, by local media, by reporting violations, which has us actually been supported by Deputy Prime Minister, that these multinational corporations are still subject under public scrutiny. But secondly, organizations as check and balance. And for example, how Doctors Without Borders did not even support Pfizer when they, are, they have been exploitative on the prices of their vaccines on the third world countries. So this less clear should be for time negative. Number one, how should multinational corporations help in the preservation of human rights? Affirmative is trying to use a punitive approach, which is as long as countries will not improve human rights condition, they will not invest in that country. Analyze is a backlash on the principle that they're trying to fight for to aid in human rights elevation. Why is this the case? Not only that there's a less likelihood for countries to respond accordingly since they are non-state actors in the same way how economic sanctions are ineffective on some countries, but also they are depriving the very basic human rights of the citizens of that country. Opportunity to access education, opportunity to alleviate their condition through the economic opportunities or through the jobs in which they only have. The effects of their policy is felt by the people knowing that we're dealing with countries which are resistant to change, we're only making the people suffer. But secondly, so how do we see multinational corporations doing its function to preserve human rights? The trade is a good method of influencing countries to improve human rights. We need to trade first and slowly allow them to change accordingly. There is an incentive for countries to do this knowing the contribution of multinational corporations in their very own country. We need to establish market and help people empower the citizens. This is considered as indirect improvement on human rights condition, uh, the, the condition of the people. An avenue to improve the quality of life through economic opportunities, through prospering their own countries. They will have their jobs. It could even be an enabler of some other basic rights. So for example, they might have jobs and in, through the jobs, they will get educated and they will know that they're being oppressed by their own government. With that, you're allowing people to be empowered on the ground and protest and rally to their government that, well, it's no, it's time for us not to be oppressed anymore. This is going to maybe enable our suffers, for example, in education for because market needs to be competitive. Conversely, under their model, people are going co to continually suffer. If you have an analysis on third world countries and how those sanctions operate, these people might not have edu access to education. These people might not have idea on how do things work us as uh, out from their country, which means that other uh, 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 negative small uh, negative small model, at least we have to, we have we can be able to improve, improve human rights condition. Multinational corporation must embody the principle of inclusivity in the age of globalization, where no country gets left behind. Bottom line is we need to empower the citizens to challenge the oppressive administration. The interest of the MNC to influence human rights conditions.
decision to maintain corporate integrity and for the development of other countries all is already inherent. But more than that, if not, the benefits of globalization will continually be a myth when the rest of the world is going to be left behind. Thank you.